Hi Floss Tube. Welcome to my channel, Stitching with the Waves. I'm Jennifer and this is my video number 10. So I've got a finish to show you and a pile of projects. I also have some previous finishes I'm going to share with you today. So it's been a little busy. I don't have as many whips as I normally do, but I've really been trying to focus on a couple of Christmas projects to get done. So I've had some good progress on those. So I'll show you that. Um, it's just a busy, busy time of the year in October. October always seems to be kind of crazy. So I'm really just spending the month trying to stitch any minute I can. I'm a substitute teacher and it seems like a lot of the jobs start to pick up in October. There's just more going on. So I'm teaching more days of the week and a lot of stuff going on with our, I have two Girl Scout troops that I'm a leader for, one for each of my daughters. So those have gotten really busy. I'm also an Odyssey of the Mind coach for one of them. And so this time of year is when the team just gets started up. We're just getting going and starting to have our meetings and stuff. So that's going on. And we're still kind of near nearing the end of lacrosse season. Both of my girls play lacrosse. So you know, kind of lacrosse winding down, but other things starting up. And so there's just a lot, a lot going on, it seems like right now. So it usually uh, by November, it seems like things calm down and settle into a routine. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, what else has happened since the last video? Oh, I had uh, my older daughter had her birthday party, which was super fun. We went to an escape room with a few of her friends. So I don't, if you've never been to an escape room before, go do it, it's fun. We did our first one as a family this summer. That was the first time I had been. We were on vacation in Virginia Beach and they had one there uh, that had a kid's room. So my husband and I and my two daughters went and it was just a lot of fun to solve the clues. I know some escape rooms have like rooms set up that are meant to be really scary and I don't think I'd be into doing one of those, but the rooms with the kids clues are super fun. It's just more like decoding clues and puzzles and trying to find hidden keys so you can unlock a series of locks or something like that. You know, it's just, it's a lot of fun. She and my daughter and her friends had so much fun at the party. So it was great. It was a great way to celebrate with her and her friends and just do something a little bit different and fun. So that was great. Um, other than that, you know, just the normal busy, busy life with kids in school. I'm hoping that you don't hear a lot of background noise on this video. Today is the day that I have to video. Um, I didn't want to put it off till next week. I wanted to get it done today, but it's really overcast, so the lighting's not great. And our school, our elementary school, is having their fundraiser today, which is a fun run. So we, we're we like over three quarters of a mile from the school, but I can hear the music that they are playing while the kids are running very clearly. And when, right at the beginning of the race and at the end of the race, um, they're, the announcer is super loud. It's like 10 times as loud as the music. So hopefully you don't hear any background noise. The run, the race just runs all throughout the day. Um, they kind of divide it up by grade level. So it's not just one race and they're done. It's all day long. So I figured I'd just go ahead and video and hope you hope that you don't hear that in the background. If you do, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go anyway. So let's get into it. Comments. Um, Laura Green had asked about the frame that I used to mount my petite point and if I would make a tutorial on that. So in the last video in the comments section, I typed out for her how I do it, but I will try and make a video. I've just got to figure out, um, you know, how to set up this camera so that you can see what I'm doing because I haven't ever done that before. So I will try to do that at some point here soon and see how that turns out. Hopefully it'll be good enough to post. Um, that's it for comments. So I had a couple of previous finishes. October is my wedding anniversary month. So I had stitched this sweetheart tree pattern. It is the Woodland Violet Sampler. That's what it looks like. And then here is mine. So let's get the whole thing in there for you. There you go. That's the whole thing. And then Oh, there we go. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to center this thing. It's not the easiest thing to do. So there was an alphabet there in the center where I put the wording. So I just put our names and or spelled out our wedding date using um, the alphabet that was provided to make it like as a sampler. I just used, you know, that alphabet and made my own. 
So it's really beautiful. It's got a lot of fancy stitches and beading and things like that. And as you saw, it's not finished. I stitched it in 2007, the year we got married. I finished it before our wedding, but you know, we were newlyweds and we were buying a house and we were having babies and I just never felt like I wanted, like I had the money that I wanted to use to professionally frame it. As we all know, that's pretty expensive. So now, here we are 12 years later and I've started to get into doing alternative finishing that's not just framing professionally. So I am going to take this piece to the shop. I'm gonna find some way that I'm going to fully finish it. I decided that I'm gonna do it. It had been in a drawer and it had gotten super rumpled and wrinkled up and I was concerned about ironing it because, um, let me show you again. It's got this big purple heart shaped charm here and then all of these beads, like there's just beads throughout the whole thing. And I was really concerned about ironing it and it was so wrinkled and I just was afraid if I ironed it, it would get messed up. So if you have that situation, go find the Twisted Stitcher. Vana just started a new series in her finishing school series um, where she gives you tutorials on how to finish things. And this new series she's doing is finishing school back to the basics. So the first one was about ironing and she shows you how to iron stuff that's got buttons and beads and all sorts of embellishments on it safely without ruining the piece. It was awesome. It's not a really long video. It's pretty short, but it is so full of great tips on just how to iron pieces in general and then especially how to iron pieces safely that have embellishments. So I followed her tutorial. I did it. The piece came out great. No wrinkles. So I'm going to commit now 12 years in to figuring out some way to finish that that's not putting the money into professionally framing it um, it is a gorgeous piece and i think it absolutely could be professionally framed um but i just it's not where i want to put my money right now maybe one day i will so i'll try and find a way to finish it that i could always take it back apart and frame it if i wanted to or maybe i'll find a frame and i'll make this my attempt to frame it myself I don't know. I just got to go experiment and see. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm going to figure that out. So then my other piece is another piece I made for my wedding. And this is with this ring uh, by oh, the Needle Love Company. And it's from 1993. So the, it's got like bride and groom stands ups and some other little, I don't know if they're ring pillows or bags. I'm not sure what that stuff is. The thing I made was this candle down here, this Unity candle. And it's like so small in the picture. I don't know if you can even see anything. So I'll just show you the big one. Mine's been out on display for 12 years. So particularly the bow has seen better days, but okay, it's really heavy. So it is this big, probably 12 inch tall pillar candle. Okay, and here we go. This is a stitched piece that I stitched on Looks like even weave, no idea what count. And cut it out and then I used um, push pins around the edge and then glued this fancy trim. It's focusing on my face and not on the piece. Sorry, you guys, I gotta get out of the way. Um, I glued, I used push pins through the edge of the fabric and then glued this fancy trim over top of the push pins so you can't see them. That's how it's finished. Um, when I first stitched it, it's just uh, full crosses. Like there's not as many fancy beaded bands and fancy stitches. I did some chain stitches here in this band. I did um, some Smyrna crosses with beading in this band. Um, it comes with an alphabet so that you can add in the names of the couple and the date. So you're able to really change this up to say whatever you want it to say. And the original pattern just had a couple of simple bands that were just full crosses for decoration in between the wording. So I probably made eight of these or so over the years for various family members and friends who were getting married. So every time I made it, I would change up the stitching a little bit, make it a little fancier. So by the time I got around to doing mine, um, it ended up being a lot like, you know, fancy stitches. And I was just, you know, more advanced of a stitcher. So I was making my own 
kind of made my own pattern out of the basic pattern that they had given. And then the pattern for the back um, said to have and to hold from this day forward. It's right here. And the first one I made, that's what it said. I made it just like that. But by the time I was doing mine, I was just using the alphabet that came with it and changing up the wording and adding in some fancier stitching. There's like a braided piece in there, braided band with smart crosses. Um, just a lot of different stuff. Like I said, it's kind of getting a little beat up from having set out for the past 12 years, but uh, it's still a good enough shape to display, right? I just need to get some new, need to get some new ribbon. I'll show you the bottom down here. It's just got some little flowers tucked in here and then in the ribbon, tied onto the ribbon there. I need to polish this up. This is a uh, sterling silver charm in the shape of a heart that says Colorado because I got married in Colorado. So I need to redo this bow, get some new sheer white ribbon and get that little heart polished up, give it new life. But those are my previous finishes from the past. And then I had a fully finished object that I finished stitching and fully finished this week. So this is one of the candle wraps that I started making during Jolly July in, in July. Um, I had found the pattern on Antique Pattern Library and stitched it up on this linen banding. It was from 123 Stitch and it's got this little focus up there, pyramid shape along the edge of the banding. It's 27 count and this is raw or natural linen. So finished stitching that up. I'm pretty sure that this pattern was from Antique Pattern Library. I think that is where I got that one. So I'll turn it on for you. I I think you can kind of see it's bright in here but you can kind of see this is an LED pillar candle so um, has a timer function where I can turn it on and whatever time I turn it on if I want it to be on from 5 to 9 p.m. I just turn it on one day at 5 p.m. and it'll stay it'll come on every day at 5 and go off at 9 repeatedly so it's great for holiday decorations so I just a nice did you know a pattern I found on antique pattern library in red and green for Christmas. And I'll show you um, how I did the back. I am not, I need to redo the back, but it is good enough for now. And I have so much other Christmas stitching I wanna get done. I'm just gonna kinda let this go for now. But the idea worked, it's just not perfectly executed. So I bought a pack of six buttons. I gotta get my face out of the way. I always forget I have to get my face out of the way so you can see it focused. So I just, sewed the six buttons down you know this is the flap here so i sewed three buttons on this side of the flap and three buttons on that side and when i was dry fitting this before i stitched the buttons on i had wrapped it around and i thought i had folded the linen so that there would be you know ever so slight of a gap between the linen but the linen ended up butting up against itself really well so you might say well why didn't you just you know whip stitch that up and call it a day i want to be able to take this off these you know, timer LED candles are pretty expensive and I want to be able to take the wrap off and put on, you know, just a, a pattern that I can leave on all year long or put on a pattern that's good for different seasons. So I want to make more of these wraps and I want them to be removable. So that was the reason for the buttons. Um, I just, I need to cut the buttons off, fold the fabric back further and then re-sew the buttons on in a different location. I've folded the fabric back as far as I can with those buttons. They just, they overlap each other a little bit. It needs to have a little gap. And then if you can see right there, face out of the way, right here, there is a loose end of floss, just barely sticking out there. You see that? So what I did was used, if you remember those envelopes, where on the flap of the envelope, it had a little circular button. And then on the main part of the envelope, there was another little circular button and it had a string between the two. And you just kind of figure eight the string between the two buttons. That's what I did here was just take a length of floss and just figure eight it. I wrapped it around one and then just did figure eights between the two until I ran out. And I left the very end just sticking out. So I'll be able to pull it, you know, get a hold of that end and unwind it. And then this will just come off. I had um, been talking when I went to Virginia Beach this summer. I went to World Cross Stitch Day celebration with uh, Donna Ray from Flamel Jamie Farms and a bunch of other women from the Virginia Stitchers group. And I talked with several of them about different ways to finish this. And buttons was one idea. 
that one of the women had. Um, we had talked about putting like the elastic cording on one side and a button on the other. And I was just afraid that, when I started to think about that, that the elastic cording would pull too tightly on the linen on the side that it was on and kind of pull that linen out of shape. I thought that two buttons on either side and the floss wrapped between them would give a little bit more even tension and it wouldn't be, I would be able to loosen, you know, it wouldn't provide so much tension on the linen fabric, basically, and pull it out of shape. So I eventually um, plan to, like I said, cut those buttons off and restitch them on, but you're only going to see this side. <laughs> so for this Christmas, it's going to look like this. And then in the future, I will probably move those buttons. Or if I have time before Christmas, maybe I'll do it then. But for right now, I'm calling this one done and ready to display. So there's that one. I have one more that I haven't worked on, but I'll show it to you again because it's been a long time. I completely focused on getting that other one done. So this is still the 27 count linen banding. Um, in that same pyramid pattern, but this is an ivory color. So I'm doing these in some Belsois silks. So this is maybe a quarter of the way done. So I'm gonna pick this one up. It, the pattern um, isn't, the stitching isn't as dense in this pattern. So hopefully this one will move along a lot more quickly and I can get this one finished up before Christmas too. And now that I know that in theory my idea works, Hopefully I can get the back of this one with the button attachments to work a little better. I think I'm going to get smaller buttons and I don't know, just hopefully it'll come out better the second time around. So let's move into whips. So I worked the teens. I don't know why I'm even showing you guys this one because I've hardly worked on it at all, but this is Eiffel Quaker from Jardin Privé. And I had almost finished the Eiffel Tower last time I showed it to you. I just finished the aqua parts of it and then I put that little bird up on top. And then I set this one aside. Uh, this is for my, my older daughter, so I had started it on her birthday, and I just wanted to get that one motif completed, and then there, I started it on her birthday. I would still like to finish it this year, so I'm gonna keep working on it, but for now, at least it's started. All right, this one is Stitching Book Club from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. It's a Pride and Prejudice themed piece. And I have finished part one. It's a mystery sal. And I have completely finished part one. It's, yeah, that's looking correct. Okay, sorry. Wanted to make sure for some reason I suddenly thought, is that the back I'm showing you? But it's not, it's fine. It's the front. Um, so this one, I did a color conversion. A lot of her, uh, Call for color scheme had a lot more pinks and reddish color, like coral colors in it. So I stitched it up just to be a little bit more blue. So it fits in with my decor a little better. So that one I am loving. It's turning out really pretty. And the next part, it's October 8th, the next part comes out. So I'm gonna, I got that part one done and then I started to think I really, should focus on my Christmas stitching. So this is, let me put this board down because I don't think I need it anymore. Quaker Ball de Noel from Fleur de Lynn. Okay, so I got one more of the octagons done. Was it? <laughs> Took me a second there, guys, sorry. I'm slow today. So I got this octagon done. And that color is not turning out really well. Let's see, there we go. If I hold up something white with it, maybe that'll, yeah, much better. There we go. That's true to color. So I got that octagon finished. So it's coming along. I just did that one, and then I decided that I was gonna focus on my Christmas shadow box house. So I've been doing patterns for that out of the Magic of Christmas to Cross Stitch from Veronica Anshin Jay. And I'm close on this one, you guys. So I finished this little rocking horse. Little thing, and I've been working on this. It's gonna be a little birdhouse ornament. And then I just have one more piece planned to stitch for this, and that'll give me nine stitched pieces. So it's got 14 compartments in that house. I'll have nine pieces stitched, 
And then my plan is to get some sort of patterned fabric and some solid fabric and fill up the other compartments for this year with those things. And also with some little Christmas decorations that I have for my miniature house. And then I'll see how I like it that way. And if I want to stitch some more pieces, I'll probably do them next year. But this way, nine pieces I feel like is enough and it's gonna you know, fill it up and be a good amount to have in there for it to look complete and not look too sparse. So I'm trying really hard to get this stitching done for it so that I can work on fully finishing it and have it ready to go for decorating. So those are my whips. I've been, you know, just trying to focus on the Christmas pieces. That candle wrap took me way longer than it should have, you guys. I don't know what it is about it, but I kept having to frog. I'd put in part of a leaf or, you know, one little stem area and be like, that's not in the right spot. That has to come back out because it's very like symmetrical geometric pattern and it was very noticeable that it was off. So. I don't know why that one gave me fits, but oh man, it did. I kept putting it in time out, but I did push through, I got it done. So at least that piece is finished, got one, one Christmas piece finished. So I'm really working hard to try and finish up those Christmas things and I haven't touched any of my other whips. My plan is to really focus on Christmas and get that done and then I'll go back and start rotating through my other stuff again. Um, I did good, you guys. I don't have any new starts to show you. So I'm really proud of myself, I resisted and didn't start a single new thing. So that's great, because I need to just focus on what I've got right now. Um, for a floss tuber, the person that I wanted to give a shout out to today is fairly new. She started floss tubing a few months ago. Her name is Erin, um, and that's her floss tube name. It's just Erin, so I'll link her in the description box so you can find her. And then her name on Instagram is Perpetual Projects. So I feel kind of, uh, that name very much resonates with me, Perpetual Projects. I have perpetual projects myself and so that really resonates with me and her stitching is really cool. I think in her first video she talked about, um, I think it was like near the end of June and she was like, oh, I'm not going to do any patriotic stitching. I know a lot of people are doing patriotic stitching, but I'm not going to do any. And then her next video in July is like all the patriotic stitching <laughs> was tons of patriotic pieces, way more than she had been planning to work on. And so that kind of resonated with me as well. It's like, this is a kindred spirit right here. Um, because I mean, my Christmas projects are out of control this year. I have so many that I want to do and I'm really pushing hard to get them done because I picked so many. So um, the, uh, she's working on the Universal Monster Sal as well, which is really cool. So she was working on um, like the Phantom of the Opera Room and the Frankenstein Room, and she's just making, she does, and I've noticed with a lot of her projects, she really customizes a lot of what she does and makes a lot of changes to make it her own. And that's really neat to see, and it's neat to see her thought process behind it and how she does those things. She also is doing the Stitching Book Club Sal, and you've got to go on Instagram and check out the pictures of her piece. Her flowers, she's doing all sorts of specialty stitches to make the flowers, and they are just gorgeous. So it's a really pretty piece. So you should definitely go and check that out if you've been following along with Stitching Book Club at all. Make sure you don't miss hers. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have a tiny bit of haul. I got on uh, eBay. There was a lot of the Guterman silk threads. So I got a couple of colors of beige and a red. And then I got three colors of blue and a gray. This is showing up terribly. Let's see if we can hold them on a piece of paper. Let's see. Let's see if the white helps. A little bit, yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. So got four different, three different shades of blue and then like a blue gray color. So uh, they all came together in a lot and some of them had multiples of those shades, but I think there was only one shade that I already had. So that was great to kind of build up my collection of the Guterman threads. And then this is another tip from Vana, the Twisted Stitcher. I watched her last floss tube video, pretty sure it was her last one. And I have the Snag Nabbit from Dritz, which is a needle just like these. And oh, face out of the way. Okay, so the end down here, it's gonna focus eventually, I'm sure. The end down here is pointy, just like a regular needle, but the opposite end of it, can you see that, how it's ridged? 
I'm sure a lot of you have the snag nabbit. It's great for uh, when you have a stitch that's not laying correctly. You just put this straight down through the hole from the front and that rigidy part grabs onto that thread and just pulls it snugly to the other side. Or if you have like an end of a thread that slipped through to the front, great to pull it back through. Um, I think their intended purpose is for sweaters and things uh, to pull snags through to the other side. So I have the Drit Snag Nabbit. You might be wondering like, why do you need more? These are from Clover and they're called Snag Repair me Needles. So the one over here is pretty much the exact same size as the Snag Nabbit, but this one here is about, I don't know if you can tell from that, it's about half the diameter of the other one. It's much skinnier. So that's great because when I'm doing my petite point, I feel like that thicker one, it's too big for the holes to go through. Or if I'm on 40 count linen, it's just too big and it leaves, you know, like the whole virgin hole thing where once the needle's gone through the hole, you can just never get that linen to lay back so that it doesn't look like a needle's gone through it. The, the snag nabbit is just too wide of a diameter to put through there. It just pushes the linen threads out of the way too much and the silk gauze as well. It's just kind of too big. So I'm really excited to have this thinner option for using for my higher thread count stuff. So tip from Vana, uh, I got these on Amazon. I'm sure they're available other places, but they're Clover brand. I'll show you that again. Clover uh, snag repair needle. It, I don't know why this is taking so long to focus today. Maybe it's because we have poor lighting. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. All right. Um, plans? Keep up with Stitching Book Club and stay on top of that so I can keep getting the parts done as they're released and keep up with my, my reading as well. The first reading day for that, uh, the first discussion day for it is this Sunday. So that's going to be fun. And then focus on my Christmas pieces. I usually decorate for Christmas sometime around Thanksgiving just because Thanksgiving weekend... You know, the kids are off for an extended holiday from school and so we just have more time then. It just seems easier to get the decorating done then rather than wait until further into December when we're really busy. So I really want to get these projects finished up and, fin and fully finished by then. And then I'm going to still work on FFOing my big pile of finishes. I think I mentioned in my last video, I had a big pile. Um, I went to Michael's and Joanne's last week. They're very close to my house. Tried to find, some, you know, took my pile of finishes with me, tried to find the things I needed to fully finish, but I just did not have a whole lot of luck. I got the things I needed for like finishing one or two things, like the buttons for that candle and a few other basic things, but the rest of it, I just couldn't find what I needed, especially the fabrics that I want, that I'm looking for. So there is a Hobby Lobby and a big Joann's a few towns away. So the Joann's near me is very small. Like they, they don't have a framing department. They don't even have a single picture frame. There's other departments that they just don't have in the store. And a lot of the departments, if they do have it, it's very small. There's, there's not much in that department. You know, it's just much smaller than, than other stores because of the size of the space they have. So I'm gonna make a trip out to that other town to go to Hobby Lobby and the Big Joann's and hopefully I'll find what I'm looking for there. There's also a lot of great thrift shops out that way. So I'm really hoping to like make a day out of it, which makes it a little hard to find a day to go when I you know, don't need to rush back or I don't have anything else I need to get done. So I need to find an empty day, which is gonna be hard to do in October, but I'm gonna do it. And Hobby Lobby, Big Joann's, I don't wanna be rushed. I just wanna take my time and find the stuff that I'm looking for and you know, have plenty of time to think through it. And then also hopefully squeeze in some thrift shopping as well before I gotta get back. So that is my plan for the next few weeks. Um, I also have a couple of tutorials in like the petite point frame one and a couple of others that I'm hoping to get filmed and posted as well. So we'll see how that goes. I've got to figure out how to set the camera up for that and how that all works. So hopefully that works out well and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks so much for watching. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram, I'm stitching with the waves over there as well. And Appreciate everybody who likes and subscribes to my channel. I'm just, it's crazy to know that so many people out there are watching my videos. It still seems kind of strange and new. So I really appreciate everybody who comments. Like it's just so much fun to hear from all of you. So thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Bye.